Once people get used to being asked for their papers regularly, it just comes to seem entirely normal. But in fact, for most of American history, for most people, you didn't have to produce your papers when it was demanded by a government agent. Most people didn't even notice it, but slowly we have adopted an internal passport system in the United States of America. You cannot travel on an airplane, certainly not a commercial plane, without showing government-issued ID. It can be a state ID or a federal one. It has to be government-issued. Now on trains and also increasingly other forms of public conveyance. You may not board if you are not willing to show your ID. The idea is this is protecting us, as if terrorists and scary people don't have IDs and wouldn't show them to get on the plane. This is simply irrational. <clears throat> and in 2004, it was legalized by the Supreme Court in a split decision, a terrible, catastrophic one in my opinion, which the Cato Institute argued strongly on the other side. It's a five to four decision that a man could be arrested, prosecuted, for merely saying to a police officer, quote, I don't want to talk, and refusing to show his ID papers, his government-issued ID to the police. So gone are the days when a peaceful person could go about his or her business without having to justify his or her activities or even one simple existence to the officers of the state. That America now is already in the past. And don't let me go on about the looming fiscal crisis of the state, the gigantic unfunded liabilities that the younger people in this room are going to be bearing. By the way, thanks a lot uh, for that. Uh, this is going to be a terrible bur burden to young people dealing with over $100 trillion in unfunded liabilities. But you can read all about that in the little book I put out last year called After the Welfare State. Notice the optimistic title. Uh, which you'll get uh, here at the conference. And you can find the shocking numbers on Cato's website. Now, fortunately, after all that bad news, the Obama administration is doing its absolute best to warn people of the dangers of big government and to promote libertarianism by doing what they do so well, which is to ignore the law. They do that with such skill. The IRS targeting and scrutiny of groups that had Tea Party or Patriot in their names, including what do your members read, a full list of your membership, synopses of all the materials read by the members, and so on, as a condition for getting their tax status. Interestingly enough, I wish I were uh, able to listen in on this, but the head of the IRS, and the general counsel of the IRS had been spending a lot of time, face time with the President of the United States in the White House. As people have pointed out, this is unheard of. So what were they talking about? And I would very dearly like to know what was being discussed in those meetings. The general counsel of branches of government like this don't go and meet the President of the United States of America. He normally talks to the Attorney General and the Justice Department when he wants legal advice. So I would dearly love to know what was being discussed in those meetings. Something was going on that they'd rather we not know about. The lies covered in the cover-ups of total screw-ups from Fast and Furious to the Benghazi, the astonishing use of drones, as I like to point out when I'm on college campuses, our President Barack Obama has killed with drones more people than all previous Nobel Peace Prize winners combined. When you think about that, it's an astonishing record. Imagine the response if the Russian government were to start sending drones to blow up cafes in California or Arizona or New York because they said there was a Chechen opponent of the government having coffee there. And sorry about the other 36 people who got blown up along the way. Or if Castro were to send missiles into coffee houses in Miami saying, well, there are enemies of the state there conspiring against us. I don't think that would sit very well. Unsurprisingly, the U.S. government just recently announced a call for an international convention on the use of drones. 
You know what sparked that? The Ch Russian and Chinese government are now testing their own drones. And now they said, oh, maybe that's a problem. Maybe we should start to think about whether these attacks are legal and appropriate. And I must say, what a shameful moment just the other day when the U.S. government, in its furious pursuit of Mr. Snowden, will set aside all the legal issues involved in that, uh, had to send a letter to President Putin by the Attorney General of the United States, which they didn't release publicly, but they were just forced to, promising that Mr. Snowden would not be executed or tortured if he were to be returned to the United States. And I have to say, I was ashamed that the U.S. government is now in a position of having to make a promise like that to a two-bit thug like Vladimir Putin, that we would not torture someone upon bringing him back if they'd succeed to the United States. That was a moment for me of deep personal shame that we have reached this level. The threatened prosecution under the Espionage Act of 1917, by the way, almost all prosecutions under the Espionage Act of 1917 have been under this president, interestingly enough, of a Fox News reporter, the collection of emails of 20 reporters and editors, the monitoring of their text messages, the seizure of all the phone records of Verizon and other companies on the basis of a secret warrant issued by a secret court, a general warrant, and we're told, don't worry, it's law, secret law, but law. Now, what is happening very often is driven by a crisis mentality. And when we find ourselves in a crisis, it's so easy to abandon rational thought. We forget to ask questions. We simply assume, well, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Here's the syllogism of power in Washington. Something must be done. This is something. Therefore, this must be done. That's a it's logically valid in its own way, uh, but that's what drives us constantly. And people don't ask those hard questions. Will this work? Is this appropriate? Is this legally authorized? Politicians understand this dynamic very well. Former Congressman Rahm Emanuel, mayor of Chicago, at the time President Obama's chief of staff, blurted it out when he said on television, quote, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. What I mean by that is an opportunity to do things that you did not think you could do before. Little moment of candor on television. Well, it's our job to ask awkward questions and to risk being insulted, called unpatriotic and selfish and un-American, unfair, because we want to know that what is being proposed is really justified. Is it legal? Is it efficacious? Will it do the job? Is it efficient? Could it be done more cheaply? And is it compatible with our principles and our values? Because we don't want to abdicate our personal responsibilities as free persons and free citizens, to merely give a free hand to politicians to do as they please with our businesses, our assets, our opinions, our educations, our families, and our lives. 